Alba, can you hear me? Then <laughs> you like my 90s hair? <laughs> I had a little fun cleaning my bathroom today. Oh, I didn't change out of my sweatshirt either. Man, I'm just going to be all comfy today. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah, it helps when I turn my mic on, hey? <laughs> I'm just going to check something quick here. Where'd my mouse go? There it is. Just want to try something quick. Awesome. So I logged into this different, so I'm curious. Um, Elba, did you get a notification when I went live with this? Oh, that's okay, Elba. Can always catch up later too. You did. Okay, cool. Hi, Wanda. How are you today? Okay, I see it there now. Perfect. Cool. So I just learned how to share the link with less steps, which is awesome. haven't been for a massage in so long but I hear I have a whole spa day, spa day scheduled in Bali that my sister-in-law is giving me. I apologize for my uh <laughs> I'm wearing pretty much my pajamas I didn't realize it. <laughs> Sweatshirt and and some uh, leggings. I've been working hard all day. Decide to bit the handles, you're just gonna do it as a crossbody, that works fine. You just didn't want to cut into those uh those little grogus, did you, Elba? <laughs> oh there you see? You're in my brain, you read my mind. <laughs> That's funny. So we'll give everybody some time to sneak in. Hi, Karen. Uh, yeah, so I squirreled a little bit this morning and I started cleaning my bathroom 
and um, <laughs> I found my box of 90s hair things. So this is one of those things that's a crimper and a waver. This is a waver, and then I have a spiral one. <laughs> so I just went crazy, and then um, I realized I may look a little ridiculous and <laughs> that I had class tonight, but it was a lot of work to do this, so I left it. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I didn't take any breaks. Well, actually, I admit I didn't get into my sewing room till 11 because I sat on the couch until 9 o'clock. And then when I got up, I got ready. I got my hair, my makeup done anyways. And then I started cleaning my bathroom for some unknown reason. And then I went underneath and found the box. And then I was like all reminiscing about, oh, 1993. Then this happened. <laughs> and then I started working on that trailblazer a little more. My hair is amazing, Anna. It's like I'm writing at a graduation again, like 25 years ago. not too frizzy it sure gives a body though like really you can tell I have a lot of hair when it's just straight it doesn't look like it but we have Anna yay so for everybody that's here who is sewing along with me today Maybe next I'll break out the crimper. I don't think I want to go that far. <laughs> I used to crimp my hair all the time. I actually in high school had a spiral perm. Like I actually had the spiral perm right up until about, I'm not going to lie. I had a spiral perm five years ago even. <laughs> Oops, I lost it. Okay, open up again. I'm doing weird things. Okay, there we go. I'm just typing a quick message. You're just gonna watch this much, Kim? Aw. Is everything okay? Is it from your surgery? You want me to bring these hair tools to Florida, Anna? Okay. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, well, Wanda, do you know what? You'll get caught up fast. I said we're only on the flap so far, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just catching up on some, some of the chat because my screen went down. Awesome. How are, what bag did we do last month? Was that Daryl's drive on Tuesday? How are Daryl's drives coming along and our take threes? So, so far, nobody is sewing with me today. You had four days off. Sometimes, Kim, four days off, you probably filled it with a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes that makes it exhausting in itself. Hope you feel better soon. And we'll give it till about 10 after to see who else pops in. Diane won't be popping in because she is on her way to, she's flying south for the winter. Frankie is on her way to Florida as well, flying south for the winter, so we won't see Frankie or Diane, I don't think. Frankie already finished her dandelion, and Diane did her dandelion and her Melanie already. They're crazy. I'm impressed. Look, Dave bought me a sweatshirt. <laughs> Just in case I forget where I'm from, right? Hi, Annie. It's actually a super comfy sweatshirt, though. I love it. Annie, are you sewing along with me today? I said, if I am sewing by myself, I'll probably go at quite a fast pace, just so you guys are aware. <laughs> I am super, super excited. I have ordered my new cutting table. I figured uh, with the coffee account, we got to about half of the money for the table. Dave was gonna build me one, but then like my dream table is on sale at Central Sewing. It's a Sylvia design table. So I've taken the coffee money and then I actually have some ambassador money from Titan Machines that from those of you who have used my name, um, as a referral for Titan, I get like 2% of the sale. I'll admit it in store credit. So I was able to take that store credit from those that have uh, bought a Titan machine in with my referral and, um, the coffee money and then a little bit of my own money as well, um, to pay for like the GST and the shipping part of it. Um, yeah, so I should have it within like the next week to 10 days. I'm super excited. Then we're going to have to do a revamp of the studio. Um, I didn't end up putting my overhead camera in just because we knew we were getting a new table. So we're going to just do it all at once. So I'm hoping it'll be here. It won't be here this weekend, but I'm hoping the next weekend. I'm really excited. Annie, you're sewing with me? Oh, no, I will catch up. I'm feeding my kids. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, Kim, not good. I get a new roof. I'm getting a new roof November 17th. They're starting my new roof, but mine's not leaking, thank goodness. All right, so who do we have in here? Am I, okay, so so far I have Anna, Annie, Elba, Karen, Kim, and Wanda. Am I missing anybody? I mean, I'm missing, we have 22 class members and that's all that's here right now. But <laughs> I am excited because this table is so wobbly and this one it actually folds down so i can move it out of the way so the table i'm working on right now is a dining room table that i actually picked up at the dump of all places and it's only 54 inches by 25 ish inches this way and the table i have on order is 74 inches by 40 inches 
And I also ordered a 70 by 40 cutting mat. Like, I'm so excited. So, I mean, I have these cutting mats and we see how tired they are already, right? Like, I've had them for like five years. Um, I'll still use them, but I'm really excited for um, just a nice fresh look, especially for the classes and everything. So, I'm excited. So, yes, thank you everybody who donated to the coffee count that... Uh, ended up being half of the cost of that table. It helps so much. Now I got to think about um, what to save for next. I'd love to get rid of these carpets, but that'll be <laughs> when I move this room all together. So yeah, I actually was saving um, up for an embroidery machine, but for um, with my ambassador savings, but uh, a cutting table is definitely more needed for the channel as that coffee money goes towards stuff that is only to make the channel better so I don't spend it on anything else so I thought that was a good investment for that so half of the, the coffee money paid for half oh hi Frankie and and then I paid for the other half it's not really a new do I just uh, cleaned my bathroom and found like my crimping irons and everything so I decided to revisit my younger years I totally forgot I had class when I had done that and I'm just really glad it doesn't look super ridiculous because um, it would take forever to come out. Did you make it to Florida safely, Frankie? Obviously you did if you're here. And Frankie, are you sewing along with me today? And I love your dandelion, Frankie. It turned out good even after I confused the, the heck out of you <laughs> last week. All right. Well, I guess we should get started. I haven't even uh, acquainted myself with what we need to do today, but I think I know what we're doing. We are going to work on the slip pockets. Okay. Let me find my mouse here. One second. Oopsies. I lost my screen because Dave just texted me. Come back. There you are. All right. Table. Okay. So last week we got the flap done. This lovely thing. Now we are going to work on the slip pocket that that flap goes into my camera's all wacky okay so I've already pulled out my front slip pocket exterior and lining and now what we want to do is we want to do I want to do this right now yes we want to be installing where the female snap is or the yeah the female side of the snap is going to go let me just find my pattern piece. Um, let me figure out what it says if it's on here. So I, this pattern I find it jumps around a lot of places. There it is. So it's kind of hard to, uh, to follow a little bit. So I'm trying to make it a little bit easier to follow. Yes, I saw your dandelion, Frankie. It looked awesome. Should be, okay. So I'm actually not gonna use the pattern piece for the placement this time because I found on my first one, it was a little bit off. So I'm gonna actually go with the pattern and the measurements to where to put it. We'll give that a try. So we're gonna take our exterior piece. We're going to fold it in half to find our bottom center. And then we're gonna just double check that that is definitely, whoops, a center. So, five inches and five inches, perfect. Then we want to measure up the from the, uh, let me double check, the bottom of the flap, not from the bottom of this, 1.75 inches up from the bottom of the slip pocket. So 
in the full instructions, this part is done in step one. So I'm just going to use this and I have my half inch line right in the middle where that snip is. So I know that that is where I am going to install this. So, and I have it lined up nice and even on the bottom and I'm going to put it right there. And then hopefully that's going to work a lot better. You know what? I don't have this phone set up, so let me just quickly, because my, my brother's texting me. <laughs> one second here. One second, one second. Where do we go? YouTube. There we are. Got to put this at the machine. Said it had me go in differently this time, which um, threw me off a little bit. My program has changed. It's actually better. Oh, Oopsies. Ah. Where do we go? Hi, Lisa. Lisa, are you sewing along with me today? Okay, so I got that set up there. I will be organized here, I promise. Mark Lisa down. Lisa. Okay. I'm just gonna double check on my other one because I actually used the pattern piece for the placement, but you can kind of see, can you guys see here, my slip pocket, I ended up not being able to have centered, like it's a little bit more to the left. And that's because when I followed the pattern piece, my um, male snap wasn't quite centered with the bag. so. That's why for this one, I decided to actually go with the measurements in case it printed it a little bit weird, but you can kind of see how that pocket's a little bit, like not much, like maybe a quarter of an inch to the left a little too much. So that's why I've decided not to use the pattern piece to mark it and to actually use the measurements. So measuring up centered, 1.75, and we will hope that that's better. <laughs> we will hope. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And my male or female and my chair sunk down there we go okay go ahead and put that in and Lisa just let me know if you are sewing along so I know I know if my piece is good or not. Now I opted out of um, putting foam on this slip pocket in the pattern. It was optional, but I just found that it was going to be too bulky. It's better without in my opinion, but if you disagree, of course, it's completely up to preference. Please go ahead and put foam in this part, but I decided not to because there's foam in the part it's going to be attaching on and I'm just scared it'll just be too thick. Too bulky. Frankie, you're in Orlando, correct? I think I asked you this last week. And if you are, how long are you there for? Again, these are all kind of oblong or kind of off kilter because I dissected an old bag that I wasn't using anymore and, oops, and harvested the hardware from it because I do that. Just watching? Okay. Now, is anybody making the Melanie bag outside of the class? I hope so, because I'm going to need pictures. and chat um, if you guys have questions along the way please do ask no one is sewing with me today so I'm just going to go about the sewing business <laughs> All right. okay so now that I have that on I'm gonna take my lighting piece we are gonna put them right sides together or my clips I'm so excited for my new table. I can't wait. Can't wait. Hopefully it comes quickly. Oopsies. Let's put this a little lower. I may have 
cut this a little weird, but that's okay. Awesome, Kim, and you know you can always get a hold of me if you need a hand, right? I'd come over and help you if I could, but you live too far away. Okay, and I believe we're sewing this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and we're also going to measure in 2 inches from this edge, and we are going to stop sewing there and leave this small section open. I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit because I can see I cut this piece too big. I need it to match up. All right. Let's switch on over to Tiffany. Oh, I forgot my tape. I just Gave her her spa day, so she's a little bit uh, oily, so I apologize for that. Mm. I love this tape for my seam allowances, as long as it'll stick to my oil. Oops, that's not quite centered. Right in the middle. All right. I'm tempted to try to get in another one for my markets, but my markets start in like two weeks. I don't know if I'll have time, but I think this Melanie bag is going to be an amazing seller. I really do. I haven't advertised it on my business page just yet, so I want to save it for my tables. I know that seems kind of weird, but I just always fear I'm not going to have enough for my tables, and then I'm scared that I'm not going to have, I'm not going to sell anything either. Let's see what happens. That was oily. Okay, where's my pinchers? Okay, so I'm just going to trim up my curves with the pinking shears, just the curves. And I'm also going to go in and just trim up these corners. Reduce some of the bulk there. Without cutting the seams, of course. And then one thing I like to do when it's a seam like this, you can see my oil there, is if your machine doesn't mind double-sided tape, because we're going to be turning through this hole, but I want to have a nice crease already, and I can't press this because it's vinyl. So I'm just going to take some double-sided tape right underneath the seam all the way across, like so. And I'll do this on both sides. I'm going to do it on this side first. And I'm just going to fold that seam down right along that stitching there, nice and even. So I have a nice edge to work with when I go to top stitch this shut. Hopefully. But do you know what? It doesn't want to stick to my oil. Because <laughs> I got oil on it. No. Oh, I got oil on it. So it's safe to say double-sided tape does not like oil. It's okay. I'll put a clip there. I'll clip it as well. And I'm going to do the same on this side.
Kim, that Architect wallet is on my wish list. Is it something I should be making for my tables? Or are they super fast? I've heard they're like killer fast. Okay, I'll do the same with this one and I can put it nice and even with that other one if it was sticking. Okay. So you don't have to do what I just did. I just find it a little bit easier for having that seam. Go ahead and turn this right side out. Push out those corners. I just love this white with the rose gold. Holy moly, it's pretty. I hope you're feeling better for your market. I need a poker tool. Where's my poker tool? Where are you? I lost it. Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. Get around those curves nicely. work those seams out so you get a nice curve. I don't know if I'm going to have a super nice curve. It'll be an okay curve. Oh, that one's not bad. That one's not bad once I poke it out. Okay. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put clips here and we're just going to top stitch along this top. Sure. I'm going rogue on the pattern again, so let's just make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, so we're going to just top stitch right along this top edge. Go over to Tiffany. Oh my goodness, well, mask up. Stay safe. I mean, if you wear a mask, you're usually okay. Just going to check my tension quickly. Good girl, Tiffany. I've been working her hard today. Okay, so I'm going to start in my top stitch at an eighth of an inch in from each end because when I go to put this on the bag, I want to start and stop at that same spot so I have like a continuous top stitch. But I am going to back stitch, and this top stitch is going to close up that turning hole. I gotta go let Benny out one second before he goes to the bathroom on my floor. One sec, Ben Ben, I'm coming. Okay, excuse me just for a second while I let Benny out. Sorry. Let him out the door. Come on, Ben, go upstairs. my lighter to that just to keep those frayed ends in. All right. Table. Lisa says I made a lot of architect wallets. Women love them. I bet I have sold 20 to friends. Oh man, maybe I need to make some. I have some really fun vinyl that I could be using. So maybe I should do that. Okay. So now I am jumping to where are you? So this pattern does jump all over the place and I try to work on one section at a time. So I've got to figure out where the front pocket goes. What page is this? I already did my flap. Here it is. So now we are on step number 17. I know I'm jumping around from the pattern, but I find the pattern jumps around quite a bit. 
Which way does this go? This way. Okay, so we're going to find the top and bottoms of one of our main panels. And do our snips. My son actually, there's a COVID outbreak on his floor at work too, but I think it just comes with working health care and you just have to stay as safe as you can. I'm just going to make sure those snips are definitely center. Six and a half, six and a half, six and a half, six and a half. Okay, so now this one, because I don't want to put pins in it, I'm going to just use a little bit of double sided tape along the bottom here so I can stick it in place. Okay, and we're going to measure one inch up from the bottom. Nice and centered. Is it one inch? Nice and centered. That's one, two. So I'm kind of using where my magnetic snap is to kind of eyeball it and then looking in here to see where it's sitting. And they're both sitting at a boat. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So I'm just going to double check. I need to move it up a little bit more. One inch. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and we are going to top stitch down this side around here and up if you're happy with your placement. One and three quarters. No, I'm not quite centered. Of course, my tape is sticking down there still. I'll try this way. One and three quarters. Definitely want it to be centered. One inch up, I think I'm good. I am good now. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and top stitch that in place. And there's Coco saying hi. And we're straight, and we're straight. put my needle down right where I stopped my top stitching there so it looks like it's a nice continuous top stitch. that stayed straight 
I may run a little bit off kilter. That's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to double check how that looks. So I can already tell it's much more centered than my other one was. That looks much better for sure. I might be a little crooked here, but that's okay. So what I'm also going to do is just because slip pockets I find get a lot of strain in here and I don't want that to snap off. So I'm going to just go ahead. I think I did it on this one and put some rivets in there. I sure did. Just like this one. I put two rivets there just to add a little extra security. Okay. I think I hear Coco coming. I hear Coco and Benny coming. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to put it right in these little corners here. And I always add them on my slip pockets, as you guys know, just because I want to make sure that that stitch isn't going to pop with use. Of course, I can use little scraps of Decable Heavy, too. Okay, where are my rivets? Oh. cocoa beans There we go. Okay, so that's the slip pocket done. It looks good. Again, look, I went a little bit. Can you guys see that? A little bit crooked, but I'm not worried about it. It's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, now I want to work on the back panel. So let me find where that is in here. We are on step 20 in the pattern. Want to grab your other main panel. Let me clean up some of this disaster that's going on here. I don't need that tape, but I will need that tape. I'm going to need that. Okay. It's going to be so nice having a bigger table. <laughs> Okay, so find our top and bottom centers again. Snip. I'm kind of blinding you with the light is going on that ruler I see. Oh, thanks, Kim. Little things that I found that when I started bag making, like like the rivets for those slip pockets. I would have clients who would say, look, my slip pockets popped. And I'm like, darn it. So I just tried to come up with ways to make sure that that wouldn't happen. Six and a half, six and a half, six and a half. I never trust my centers. I always have to look again. I need a drink of water. Okay, and then it wants us to so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have it facing this way. Okay, so this is going to be right side up. Our flap is going to be right side down. I didn't put that on top of my pen today. No, I did not. Okay, and what we want to do is from the top edge here, we're going to measure down four and a half inches.
four and a half. I'm actually going to mark right here as the center, just so I know. Because we're going to want this to be centered. i got to bring it down so I can see it a little bit. Oops, do you know what? That's four and three quarters. Good thing I looked. Okay. Four and a half. So there's my halfway mark there. And then we're going to draw a line across here. Like so. Make sure that's four and a half. Hi, Coco. One, two, three, four and a half and it is it's time for the chihuahua to go for its walk right now that's what she's barking at okay and then we already have our center marked on our flap i'm just going to double check that it is centered two three four five. Oh no it's the ups driver this time at the neighbor's house whenever she sees a ups truck or a canada post truck or a mailman, she goes nuts. I'm not quite centered here. I'm just going to double clip it there. Better. It's very important that this is nice and centered because it has to line up with that snap. And this is the part, magnetic snaps drive me crazy. Like I struggle with them getting them to match up. But what can you do? Okay, and then I'm going to use some double sided tape and I'm going to put it across here. Um, again, it's because I can't secure with pins because I am using vinyl. Okay, so I didn't go right to the ends. I just went about a quarter inch in on the put the tape on the right hand or the right side up of the flap. And then what we're going to do is follow our center line of our thing right up. I got to stand up to do this right up to that line. And you're going to put this right up against that line. Holy moly, Coco. Like so. So your flap is wrong side up and it's nice and centered. And I'm going to double check once again. I apologize for her. She'll stop in a minute. One and five eighths. And one and five eighths. I'm nice and centered. Okay. So this is what we have so far. And then, got to see what, how, what the seam allowance is. I don't remember. Flap lining, touch main panel, right side and top. No, that's not it. Okay, stitch along. So I wrote on the front here, what my seam allowance, three eighths. So we're going to sew across here with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You want to make sure you aren't going past the flap because that stitching will show past the flap. So you kind of want to stay like inside the flap here. Okay. Let's go over there. Where's my mouse? There it is. Nope. Wrong one. Tiffany. There we go. Welcome back. What's going on with my thread here? There we go. Okay, and this is hard because there's no seam guide here, so I kind of gotta. And I know I top stitch with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, so it kind of gives me a little bit of a guide. So, again, you want to make sure you're starting. I'm kind of matching up where my top stitching line was and making that where my needle down is. And I am going to backstitch. Now this feels a little bit thick, just so you guys know, because we're going through two layers of vinyl and two layers of foam, and then of course our woven interfacing and our cotton. So this is thick. How are you liking the Yodi coat so far, Kim? Now remember the third coat you have to leave 24 hours before you set it with the iron. Woody coat is great, but it is definitely time consuming. Okay. All right. Let go. He does not want to let it go. Okay. So next what we want to do, 
oops, I just dropped the rivets on the floor, is we are going to, I'm actually going to trim out some of this foam here that I'm sticking out. Benny's, or Brady's trying to get Benny's attention. <laughs> okay. So now what we're going to do, so I'm actually going to use more double-sided tape. Again, you don't have to, but it's just going to help us stick it down. We have to enclose this raw edge next. So again, double-sided tape is my savior. I swear it's the whole reason I got an industrial machine was so I could use it and I swear it's my most used tool. Now on that seam we're going to fold it up like this, press that in place. Now that seam is, is showing in about a quarter of an inch. We got to make sure that we're enclosing that and I believe she does it with two lines of top stitching. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go in and we are going to top stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance along here. And then we're going to go in again. I think that's what I did. I sure did. And then I went in with another quarter of an inch away from that line. So a quarter of an inch along here and then another one. And then that's going to ensure that that raw edge down there is completely enclosed. And having that double stitch line is just going to make that flap even more um, stable there. Okay. Stop me if you have any questions. And again, this is still very thick. I'm going to change my stitch length. Which way do I want to do this? I think this way. And I'm putting my needle down again along that top stitch line so it looks like it's a nice and continuous line. And again, I am back stitching. I'm not pulling my first to the back, mainly because I want to make sure this is super secure. line done and I lost my top stitch my uh, my tape's not gonna stick there today because of the oil okay and then I'm gonna go in with another quarter of an inch away from that top stitching up towards the flap Try to keep it as nice and straight as you can because it will be visible. So this is where you want to double check. You can see my two lines there. You want to double check. I did manage to catch all of my raw edges, which is good. Now, if you didn't, it's not the end of the world. Just go in with another row of top stitching and that'll get it for sure. Okay, so now again, um, 
I like that extra security, especially because this is going to be opening and closing. We don't want these to be snapping. So I'm going to go in between the lines of top stitching. I'm going to put a rivet right here in the corners. And I'm also going to put one right in the middle. So I'm just going from my notch down here to find that middle. And I'm going to put one right there as well. Let's just make sure that's in the middle. So let's see, that's... Okay. Sure is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to back it with scraps of Decoville Heavy. And pick my rivets up off the floor. Now I might have to use... Again, if you have one, mine is dull now. If you have one of these, it does leave little holes in your cutting mat, but I'm getting a new cutting mat, so I'm not really worried. But this one's dull. I have to kind of attack it really good until it goes through. But it's hard to get a um, my regular hole punch in there because of where it is. Make sure you're not going in your stitching, though. Sorry for the banging, everyone. I went through. This one didn't go through yet. Why aren't you going through? Coco thinks somebody's knocking at the door because I'm doing that. Oh, just excuse me, guys. Riley is calling, and I just got to answer it because it's my kid. Hi, Riley. Everything okay? I'm in class. Oh, no, I don't need anything. Thanks, sweetie. Okay. That's okay. We'll forgive you. <laughs> Bye. What a sweet kid. Calling to see if I needed anything as he's on his way home. I will always answer the phone when it's my kid or my parents. Dave will... Actually, I would with Dave too, but... Okay, come on, go through. Said so these Japanese screw punches are great for the first little while, but they go dull so easy. So this is my second one. Okay, that went through that time. And where is my other one? Seriously. I lost my whole punch. Right there. How do I lose these things? There it is. Riley works the young adults floor in a long-term home. He's really good for that job. He loves it. Okay. Well, especially when it's my kid, because I'm like, I know he's 23, but you're like, oh my gosh. He's actually phoning me. I mean, kids don't, they age don't uh, phone, they text, right? But maybe I make him make supper for us tonight. He can probably grill some burgers. I think that might be good. Dave is working late. Oops, no, I forgot my, no. Glad I didn't set these. I forgot to put my Decoville Heavy in behind. Now, the reason I put the Decoville Heavy in behind all these, come on, come on, is because, oh my gosh, it's stuck on there good. Um, vinyls and cottons and everything sometimes have a stretch to them. Decoville Heavy or Peltex does not. So if something with you stretches out, the rivets could pop through. And you definitely don't want that happening, but this just kind of ensures that that won't happen and that hole won't get bigger and expand. And your rivets should stay really good. Okay, let's set those in place.
that is our back panel done. Okay. Whew, I'm warm. Probably because I'm wearing a hoodie. Okay, so now we are going to do our bottoms. getting an ugly view of my table there so you do want to find if you haven't already you want to find the centers of all four sides of your bottom pieces short sides too I will admit it's a lot easier to do this when you don't have your uh, purse feet in <laughs> but I always forget to mark my centers you know me Okay, so what we're going to do is we have our centers of our main. This is what I want to do. Yes, it is. Put it right sides together, matching up that center. Clip it in place. The rest of this bag goes together pretty easy once you get past that flap. Oh, absolutely, Lisa. I've had I've had uh, I've had a lump scare myself, but it was just a fibrous milk duck. Thank goodness. But I go every year. I actually have one coming up on November twenty third. I'm glad that you are a survivor though. Okay, so once you have this done, you're going to go ahead and sew across here with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then we want to top stitch that seam in place. So we are going to make sure the seam is pointing towards the bottom panel of the bag and then top stitch through the bottom with an eighth of an inch top stitch. So it's a little bit because it has that uh, foam in there. So I didn't cut the foam out of those seam allowances. So it is a little bit thick there. Just make sure that seam is going where we want it to go. I do a lot by feel here, making sure along here, I don't feel any foam. And if I feel it's getting bulky, then I kind of go under and I readjust it. My son loves his architect wallet, but he carries his wallets in the front pocket and it fits good in his front pocket. Okay. Kim, I'm, you're not alone there. I'm really bad at resizing patterns too. I admit it. I tend to not. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing. So this is it. It's top stitched through the bottom. We're going to do the same with the other panel. Make sure you're attaching the bottom with the bottom because you will hate yourself if you accidentally do the top. So again, kind of place it like this. Make sure it's bottom to bottom, put them right sides together and do the same thing. Go ahead. 
Ben Ben. How you doing, baby? I love working with leather. Everybody should, should congratulate Anna. She got a Skyver. I'm super jealous. Now I have to make it to Ontario so I can go play with it. Okay, so on this bottom, I feel so weird that I'm actually in a sweatshirt and you guys see me wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm comfy today. And so Dave bought me this sweatshirt and I love it. It's brand new. But it's not like the most uh, stylish outfit of all time. Not the most slimming outfit. <laughs> but I like it. I kind of want one in pink too. I think it's meant for tourists because it says Kamloops, but I'm proud to be a... I'm proud to be born and raised second generation Kamloopian. <laughs> okay, and then we want to do the same thing where we are pushing the seam towards the bottom and top stitching through that bottom. Stay where I want you to go. And Lisa, I have a tutorial on the Men's Architect Wallet. It was in Wallet Week. There is a Wallet Week playlist if you need a fast way to find it. Super easy and super fast, that one. Okay. So this is where we are at. I am just loving that rose gold. So you can kind of see if we fold this up right now. See, that'll go over where the handles are. I'm just double checking that my magnetic snap is going to go where I want it. Not that I could do anything with it now, but it looks like, it looks like it's going to be okay. I hope so. Okay, so now we are going to put on our sides. So now for this, this is where I said um, in my yellow bag there, I did put foam in the sides. And that was because originally I wasn't going to be, I was just going to leave it out. I thought it was going to be a real pain in the butt to stitch, top stitch around these. And then I decided to do it anyways. And it worked out okay. I am on an industrial machine. It wasn't too thick. Um, but originally I left, I put the foam in because I was going to leave it so these were popping out and I wanted them to have just as much squishiness as the rest of the bag. The pattern does not put foam in the sides, but that is why I put foam in the sides of this one because originally I wasn't going to top stitch around the sides with this. Um, so for this one, I'm not putting the foam in because it's going to be much easier to top stitch around those sides. But if you're leaving it and not top stitching around those sides, I, I, I would suggest putting the foam in mainly because those sides will feel really kind of not as substantial as the rest of the bag. You kind of want it to have the same consistency. But if you are doing the top stitching like I'm going to do, you don't have to because they kind of get sucked into the bag and it doesn't matter as much. Does that make sense what I just said? That's my thinking anyways. So. All right. 
So I'm going to put this away for now. Now we want to do our pleats. Super easy. We're going to bring those little pleats raw edges together like so and just put a clip in it. Probably don't even have to put a clip in it. And we're just going to sew across there with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do it on all those. I'm going to do my lining ones at the exact same time as soon as I cut all my interfacing out of my seam allowances. Just because they're so fast, we'll get them done. Get them done. I should have did this before. I apologize. So does it make sense what I said about the foam? I hope so. on the machine and do that. I'm not clipping these or anything. You can if you want to, but they're just so small and it's such a fast little fast one. One done. Oh, these aren't called pleats. They're called darts darts. I'm really bad with terminology. I know what they are in my head. Yeah, Wanda, that, that could work too. Um, I honestly really love the look of the book with the sides done and they weren't that hard to do. Lisa, you're awesome. You have plenty of confidence and of course you can always contact me if you need help. Okay. So the pattern doesn't call for foam in the sides at all. Um, if you have a thicker vinyl, I probably wouldn't worry about it, but both of these bags, like I did the first one in Mora and I'm doing this one in a bonded leather and they're both pretty soft. So they, um, that's why I would have put foam in that. But if you're using a thicker vinyl, I wouldn't worry about it. I just like a feeling of consistency um, in the bag, especially if the sides are going to pop out. That's why I suggest the foam. But if you're on the fence, I would just leave it out. Because you'll probably end up doing what I do. <laughs> I would hope. My tutorial, I totally did foam though. I completely forgot to explain in the tutorial why I did it, but it's all good. Almost done with the darts. weird angle to go in brownie holy moly there we go that's better so 
Sorry for the weirdness. I start talking in the third person and referring to myself as Brandy. <sighs> You're doing more of vinyl? Then Wanda, I would say put foam in it because mine, my yellow one in Mora, I had foam in the sides and it turned out good too when I did the sides, when I changed my mind. So if you're doing Mora, do that. Unless you decide last minute that you're going to do foam or you're going to tuck them in, then I wouldn't put it on. All right. So... This is kind of what it gives us like this. So you can go ahead if you wanted to. I don't think I'm going to. You could go and you can um, kind of press those seams open. When I sew these, I'm actually going to be pushing them towards the middle. So they give actually give a little bit more thickness into the bottom part of our side panels. So I, I'm not going to open mine up. When I sew them in, I'm going to make sure that they are pushing towards the bottom of the side panels. Oh, Riley's home. Coco's saying hi. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find the top and bottom centers. She's going to bark just for a moment um, of our side panels. So what I'm doing is I'm just matching up the seams like so. And that's going to give me my true center, even though it is already, I had it marked um, from when I drew it out. But sometimes your pleats may go off a little bit, but this is just a way, or your darts, to make sure you're centered. And then find your top center as well. Hi, Riley. Hello. And the same with the other side. Match up those seams. Hi, Coco. So, okay, now we are going to put this right sides together. So I've actually popped mine out. See my darts, they were like this. I've popped them out like this. And I'm going to match up the bottom center with the center of the short side of our uh, bottom piece here. Then a couple clips. This is where I'm going to push my pleat down into the center. Same with on this side. And those pleats do not match up to anything on this thing. Don't worry about that. Just kind of go where they want to lay. Then bring up the side like so. Couple clips. Same with the other side. Make sure your flap stays out of the way. Okay, and then you can go ahead and kind of evenly distribute that fabric through. You can see mine fits perfectly. Look at that. I just love it when that happens. That just means you got all of your seam allowances right. You do a little happy dance, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, and then the other side. Haha, <laughs> fits perfect. Sweet. clip I got some more clips coming from Amazon this latch last batch is getting to the point where they're getting old and they're all breaking on me I'm working them too hard so I buy the cheap ones that are like $12 for 150 and at the same time I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clip my other side on and then I'll sew them both and go over to the machine and then they're both ready to go Okay, 
So that's what that looks like. It kind of pops in. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Not sure what she's barking at now. The side's a little bit more awkward to put on because we have the other one clipped there. Hi, Nicole. Maddie off to work. Hi, Maddie, if you're there. Hi. Again, making sure that those seams I have going towards the bottom. Bringing up the sides. Nicole, will you be making the Melanie bag? Do you know what? Stop me now. What am I doing wrong? Did anybody see what I'm doing wrong? That would have been a big mistake. He can see what I just did wrong. I didn't put them right sides together. <laughs> Gotta put them right sides together. Oh man, if I had sewed that on, I would have been so mad at myself. Okay, try this again. That was a big mistake, hey? I'm glad I caught it. I've done it before, trust me. Thought I would have cried. I didn't sew it. It was all good. I was just clipping it. Caught it in time. If I had sewed it, I would have wanted to cry. Trust me, I make mistakes all the time, you guys. You have no idea. Okay. Yay, and this one fits perfect too. That makes me happy. would have been unhappy <laughs> I'd be showing you how to fix it meaning you just carrying it all out oh my gosh cocoa beans she knows Dave should be getting home soon but he's actually working late today well I think so I haven't seen a text saying differently but he's been working a lot of overtime which is okay overtime means a bigger paycheck But Miss Coco acts out when he doesn't come in because she is his dog. Now she's barking at the neighbor's dog who's barking at her. Okay, so now we're going to go sew these on, I believe, with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Let me double check. Sure is. Okay. You're not going to really see what I'm doing. I find it easier to do this with the main panel against the bed of the machine. But that makes it so you can't really see what I'm doing because the bag is in the way. I could take it to the or to the cylinder arm, and you would see it. Uh, you would see it a lot clearer, but uh, that would mean I'd have to go thread it, and I don't want to do that right now. I will be finishing the bag on the cylinder arm machine though next week. get to the bottom curve I just make sure everything is staying in place and I kind of move the bag up and around standing the bag up as I go the center marks are still matching up which is good news stuck on that seam a little bit. You got past it. Okay, and I'm 
going to quickly just take a peek inside to make sure my stitches aren't stressed. Because if they're stressed, I would go and do a second row of stitching. But my stitches are okay, so I won't do a second row of, stress, of um, stitching. Um, again, that, that's not in the pattern, but sometimes when you're using thicker vinyls, you may see that your threads show through the seams, and that's usually because it's stressed out. And going around again within, within the seam allowance at an eighth of an inch, within the seam allowance, um, that takes care of that problem. But I don't always do that. I just double check. And if I'm noticing that, that stitch stressed area, I would go and do a second row stitching, but I'm okay with this one. I am going to dump these all over the place though. You love cooking. Coffee fun for an additional device to film for the other angle. Um, maybe my computer can't handle <laughs> any more cameras. It won't run anymore. But I actually could buy some longer cords maybe and then I could move the camera. That's a possibility to think about. But yeah, I've already got four cameras and I can't, it won't let me hook up any more than the four. But I could move the camera maybe, but I need a longer cable because my cables won't reach to the other side here. That's a good, that's a good idea, Wanda. I think I, I could do that because there's really no reason why I mean, I have a machine set up at the um, cylinder, not a machine, a camera set up at the cylinder arm that doesn't get used that often, except for when I'm over there. And I definitely could have it set up over here for another view. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll get some longer USB cords and give that a try. Thank you for the idea. USB cords shouldn't cost too much. But I used the coffee fund to pay for half of my new table that's coming. I had enough in there for half of the table that I want, and now the count is depleted. <laughs> so, there goes Coco again, I apologize. So, Coffee Fun has paid for half the table, and I have paid for the other half the table out of my own money. So, I'm excited to get that. Hopefully, it comes soon. I'm going to just double check my stitches, and I am good. Alrighty. Okay. Again, my uh, when my table comes, because it's quite a bit bigger than this one, I will probably have to order longer cords for all of the cameras because, um, yeah, I'm going to have to reconfigure this room again for it. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, thank you, Wanda. That is a good idea because there's no reason why I can't move that camera around. Okay, next. Let me see what it says. Attach your side panels. Okay. So before we flip this right side out, so this is what we have right now. Okay. And we are going to attach our handles. Or not our handles. But, oh, we didn't do it yet. We haven't made them yet. <laughs> we have to make our handle connectors. So this is something I should have did for homework. So for my handle connectors, you can definitely do them right sides together and turn them out. But I found on this one, you can see my handle connectors. I actually did them as raw edge and I edge coated them and look how nice it looks with the edge coating with that little extra shine in there. So what we're going to do is we are going to prep these. I'll show you how I did them as a raw edge style with vinyl. Can you guys see the edge coating in there? Like it's super classy and I did them in black so it matches the gunmetal. Um, it just turned out really, really good. So we will make the connectors and then we will install them later. For now, yeah, we'll just leave this like this for now because we will want it this way. Yeah, we will want it to be this way for next time. So we'll just leave this right side out. We are excited for you getting your new table and an extra large cutting mat. Yeah, and it will be a nice cutting mat that's not all ugly like this one. Okay, so I have my four handle connector pieces here. 
Why does that one look smaller? I cut those weird. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do one because for some reason I didn't cut those other ones to the right size. So I'm going to have to cut some more. Fail. Okay, so we're going to take these bigger ones. So I cut mine for my handles. What did I do? Two and three quarters? Unless I cut these ones too big. Does anybody remember what I said to cut the handles connectors for? I don't remember. Where does she have hers cut too? Oh my goodness. Cut sheet. Um, handle attachments two and a half by two and seven eighths. So that's two and a half. Wait. Just bear with me. I'm trying to remember what my measurements were that I decided to do these. Oh my goodness. Two and a half by four. That's what I did them by. So two and a half by four. I might have just cut those ones too big. No, I cut these ones too small. No, I didn't. Two. Yes, I did. Okay. So these are the right size. So we will do one and then the other one will be homework. So you're going to take two of your handles. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Are you buying me the cables? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to use double sided tape. You can use glue. You will be making two of these. I will have to do the other one for homework because I cut my pieces wrong on the other one. So I have to recut them. I guess I didn't have to put tape on both, but I did. You don't have to put tape on both. I just had a brain fart but I'm committed. <laughs> so again, this is how I'm doing the connectors. They're a little different than the pattern, but I just think they look so nice, especially if you're doing vinyl. So I did cut mine longer or wider because they have to fit in here, right? Where her other ones might not have been as long. So I'm going to put these wrong sides together on top of each other. Line them up best you can. They don't have to be exact. Okay. So they look like this. And then what we're going to do is we are going to draw a line from corner to corner. From corner to corner. So we are going to top stitch through there and then we're also going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the outsides as well. Oh thank you Kim you guys did you buy me a second cable? Yay! <laughs> you guys are the best. Okay so let's go do that so we're going to top stitch that X as well as the perimeter. And you would do this with the other two of the connectors too. Now, if you don't have edge coat, I would um, go ahead and do it as per the pattern because you will have raw edges. Okay, so I'm gonna go down one of the diagonals. I can never figure out which way to go to get all the edges. I don't know, let's go this way. You could double stitch it, it's fine. You could do the X and then go back in and do the angles, but. Every little bit does help. I mean, look at all the stuff that has been bought for me. It's great. I can 
never figure out which way to do this so you don't have to uh, double back on anything. <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, I appreciate you guys too. I couldn't do this without you guys. I really couldn't. Seriously, could not. You guys are the best. Okay, so I'm going to be double going over this bottom one, but that's okay. That one actually is not going to show because it's going to be in the seam. I seriously would not have the stuff that makes the channel what it is today. You guys have helped me grow so much because I know I definitely couldn't afford it. I cut these two now to match these ones. I wrote it down. Where is it? Two and a half by four inches, I think. Let me double check. So this pattern is, is laid out so different from most patterns that I'm used to. Um, Where's my cutting? Cutting chart is at the back. That's where I wrote it. So yes, take note if you have the Bringberry connectors or the Bringberry handles. Where are you? Okay, here it is. I cut them to two and a half inches by four inches and I cut four of them. Kim. I never expect anybody to donate, but thank you so much. So two and a half inches by four. Two and a half by four. And then what you're gonna do, I'm gonna take my ruler and just kind of go and even up these sides nice and straight without cutting the stitches. Because of course, mine are cut really bad. Even those out. And I'll show you what these are going to do. So then for homework, if you're doing raw edge like me, again, this isn't in the pattern. This is a brandy thing. You're going to edge coat just the short sides. You don't have to worry about this. And the reason for that is this is going to be wrapped around here like so. So the short sides are going to show, but this long side on the bottom, that is going to be caught in the seam. But that is what that is. And it looks really cool with the stitching and everything in there. So yeah, so for homework, edge coat, just the short sides and do the exact same thing with the um, other two connector pieces. Make sense? Okay, what are we time? 5.34. Okay, so now we can do the zipper panels. Now I think I do my zipper panels different than the pattern as well. I have a specific way I like to do my zipper panels. Let me just kind of clear some of this space away. And where's my zipper tape? There it is. So I always make my zipper tape way longer than it needs to be, okay? So like I'd never go by the pattern. I like to have a lot of tape to work with in the end because I am going to pull my tape apart. So I'm just putting it up against my zipper panels and then I'm making it almost the same width as what these zipper panels are again. And again, I just kind of eyeball it. I want to have lots of extra, so I have quite a bit to work with. So I'll tell you how much I cut here. I actually cut 18 inches, and these zipper panels are like 10 and a half. So, okay. So, and next class will go so fast, because a lot of this is going to be repeat once we get the zipper panel and the handles on. The lining goes together super fast. Okay, let me clear some of this away. Okay, so on one end of your zipper, we're going to flip this upside down so it's wrong side up. 
We're going to measure in an inch and mark it with a pen that will not erase. Again, this is for when we go to put the zipper pull on. That'll help us get it nice and straight because we're going to put the zipper pull on at the very end. Now, if you don't like doing this, you can definitely have your zipper pull on already. I just find it a lot easier to work with the zippers as two separate pieces, especially when we are um, putting the bag together and then adding the zipper pull at the end. And so when I put the zipper into the zipper jig, I know I'm going to keep trying to put it on. As soon as I get those lines matched up, I know we're going to 100% be straight. Okay, so I have no zipper pull on here right now. Nada. We're not going to do that right away. That's going to be at the end. Okay, so on the opposite side from where we marked that, we are going to take our zipper, pull it apart. I'm going to need some pins. Where are my pins? And we're going to do that 90 degree angle thing where we fold it down upon itself like so, so it kind of pitches it together. And then take that little fold and put it right up against the tape there so it forms that angle. I apologize for Coco, she is just being Coco. She's been quiet all day. <laughs> put in a pin to hold that in place. Do the same with the other side, making it matched up as close as it possibly can to that curve because you want them to be ending about the same place. Put in another pin and then we're going to just go, oh Coco stop. And then right here we're just going to go and baste in place along the edge of the zipper tape here to hold those in place. I cut, um, ouch, oh that's a question from before, never mind. Okay. Now she's outside doing it because the door's open. <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys can't hear it, but there are about five other dogs that are barking first around us. All my neighbors have dogs. Coco is just the only one we hear because she is the loudest, but she doesn't start it. But they usually get her going. But us neighbors in this block are okay with our dogs barking, mainly because our houses never get broken into. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't bark all the time though okay so you take those pins out so this is what we got and I'm going to just trim these kind of wings off to match the zipper tape here what bag did we just do this in we just did we just did a uh, recess zipper in another bag. I can't remember what though. Maybe it was a tutorial. Okay, so once you have that, you can go ahead and you can pull your zipper teeth apart and set your zipper aside for now. Next, we're going to take our four zipper panels. I decided to do mine all in vinyl. You could decide that you wanted to have two exterior and then two lining. It's completely up to you. I'm just doing mine in all vinyl. Again, I'm going to be using uh, double-sided tape. If your machine doesn't like double-sided tape, make sure that you are opting to use the, um, oh my gosh, I have to go close my door, the uh, clips instead. Where did all my quarter-inch double-sided tape go? Oh, there's some. I almost thought I was placing an order with Anna for some more, but I still have some. Oh, and I found it. It's on the floor. Oh, well. Okay. So from each end, I'm going to grab a pen. We want to fold them in by a three eighths of an inch. So from each end, I'm going to make a three quarter inch mark because half of three quarters is three eighths.
and I'm going to use double sided tape to hold this in place. Again, you can use clips or press it if you are using something that isn't what I'm using. Cloth or cotton. I'm losing my words tonight, guys. Okay. So you want to do that with all four. I'm just going to close the door so we can't hear her as much. One second. Vinny, are you going? Okay. Okay, and then you're going to fold these in. that with all of them. You want to make sure they end up being the same length. Let go. No, she, I can see her, hear her snorting at the door. <laughs> and Benny's scratching at it now. Oh my gosh. Demanding for babies, I swear. Same size, yay! <laughs> Your dog initiates the loud dog too, Lisa. It's funny how that works, hey? Coco's so loud, but she's rarely the initiator. It's like all the neighborhood dogs gang up on her and get her in trouble. Okay, so once you have all those done, we're just gonna take two for now. And on the left side of one of them, not my blue pen, my erasable pen. I'm going to measure it in three eighths of an inch and make a mark like so. Now this is where if your machine does not like double sided tape, definitely use clips here because this, I will be sewing through this tape. Now from that line all the way to almost the end, like within an eighth of an inch from the end maybe, I'm going to put some double sided tape. On the other one we didn't mark, I'm going to put some double-sided tape along one long side as well. Like so. Okay, and now you're going to look at your zipper tape. Now we want this one here with the little mark. This is our lining side, okay? So you would have done this in cotton if you weren't doing all vinyl, but this is your lining piece where you put the mark. So we are going to want our zipper tape to be right side up. So you're going to be looking at your two pieces to figure out which one can, and you want your curvy thing to be at that side. So this 90 degree angle. So look at your two pieces and decide which one belongs to it. And it's this one. So they're both right side up and the lining piece and this and that 90 degree angle on our zipper tape. We're going to line up right at that three eighths mark and stick this down nice and straight. And then we're going to take the other one that we did the tape all the way across. So this is the exterior piece. 
and we're going to put it right sides together, making sure our folds line up on this side. Again, you can do this with whichever way you like to do your recessed zipper panels. This is how I do all of mine. Okay, and they match up. Now say these didn't match up, you can always unstick it and make it so they will match up, okay? So that matched up. So that one's ready to go. Now I'm gonna prepare the other one. So this one is gonna be opposite of those. So the lining piece, we're gonna do that 3 8 line on the right hand side at the top. Do the same with the tape. It's the exact same thing, but you're doing it from the opposite end. Where's the end of my tape? And the other piece doesn't matter which side as long as it's down just one long side of your exterior piece oops that's a little too long try not to cut my paper off that would be a good thing <clears throat> okay so then you're going to take the other one you're going to see when it's right side up that curvy side is going the opposite side to the right i think i said this one was to the left this one's to the right both right side up, put that 90 degree angle up with that 3 8 line, stick it down, tie your double sided tape makes zipper panels so easy. And then take your exterior piece and put it right sides together on top of that, matching up your folded edges. Okay, now here's a good example. You can see how they don't quite match up. They match up on this side, see? But they don't quite match up here. One is longer than the other. So all I'm gonna do is take this one and I'm just going to unstick it and then I'm gonna make it so it matches up, like so. And then I'm gonna double check that these are all the same length. And they are. Okay, so now we're gonna put our zipper foot on and we are going to go across where we just stuck all of that down with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go change into my zipper foot. If you didn't want to change into your zipper foot, you could definitely do these at a quarter of an inch seam allowance if that's what your presser foot will allow. But I strongly recommend taking the time to always change out when you're doing a zipper because you just get such nice straight zippers. You really do. And it takes no time. I mean, mine, I have to unscrew and do it. It only takes me like 30 seconds. I know on my Elna, it, you just kind of dropped it on it. I'm not too sure how it stayed on, but it would do it. <laughs> okay. Go across those. Now again, you want to make sure you don't go into your zipper tail because the thread will show. You want to kind of stay within the zipper panel. And go across there. So then I'm using my right zipper foot. It unfolded. Ah! See what happened? My zipper it didn't stay down. So I gotta kind of just fold it over and go back over that again. My glue, my zipper, or my uh, double-sided tape gave away. That's okay. Next. And do the same with the other one. Okay. Holy 
me. It's getting dark outside. I am not used to the weather change at all or the season change. Okay, so this is what we got. So now what we want to do is we want to fold these wrong sides together. You can go ahead and you can finger press them really good this way and then secure them with clips. So that's what we're doing like that. Again, I'm using double sided tape because that's me. Because I can. But yes, you can finger press it. If you used all cotton, go ahead and press it with your iron. This is just what I like to do. You could use Dritz wash, wash Away Wonder Tape too if you are on a domestic, but I found that gummed up my needle a little bit sometimes too. I still used it. But doing the tape, I can kind of really push that seam away from those zipper teeth nicely and it stays in place. See? That side didn't go very good. I fix that one. There we go. Okay, and then I'm also going to, I'm happy to say that they do match up. And I'm also going to put some clips in to make sure everything stays in place. Do the same with the other one. tape. I can say my tape doesn't necessarily like sticking to this bonded leather. Stay where I need you to be just for a few more minutes. I find double-sided tape does not stick to waterproof canvas very well either. It makes me sad. But it does not. they're all nice and even still and then what we're going to do is we're going to baste the raw edge together along the bottom and top stitch the two short sides and across to the zipper tape on both I always start along the bottom, mainly because I can make sure my tension looks good. That part will be seen in the seam or hidden in the seam. Oh, good. Okay. Now up here by where the folds are towards the zipper teeth. Do you know what? I have this upside down. I'm gonna do it the other way. I want my good stitches on top. Here we go. Um, you may need your hump jumper because it does get a little bit thick right up in this corner here. I have mine handy if I get hung up, we'll see. Top stitch up here. 
Yep, I'm hung up on it. That's because I'm using a, a little bit of a, I'm gonna use my home jumper. Come on, get in there. It just helps me get up that so my vinyl doesn't get eaten up by my walking foot. And then across the top. careful because sometimes it goes flying. Oh, it only flung a little bit there. Benny's given up. He's gone upstairs now. Okay. Almost done for the day. There will be homework though. Okay. So now what we want to do, so we have these, you can see this is how they're going to go together. You want to make sure our curves are kind of at the same point and that these are the same length, which mine are. We want to find the centers along here. So we're going to fold these in half. And we're going to clip our center. Same with the other one, fold it in half. Clip that center. And it's very important that these centers match up with one another. So I'm going to put them together like this, kind of like wrong side to wrong side, match up those center marks there. And just make sure that when those center marks are lined up that everything else is lined up as well and I pretty much am so I do know that my zipper will go on nice and straight because I know that these are nice and straight so those are the zipper panels we'll be attaching those after we attach our handles next week um, so homework next week or for this week um, is everybody comfortable doing their zipper lining zipper pockets and lining slip pockets for homework i don't think there's anybody new in this group i think we've all done them before for my way i do have the tutorials in um in the bag making skills playlist that i do have on the channel as well and we've done them in past classes so is everybody comfortable doing that if we do that on our own you want to make sure you leave the zipper pocket bottom open for turning because we will be closing up the bag through that but is that okay can you guys handle that for homework so all that would be homework is um making your other strap connector if you are doing the uh, metal handles and edge coating the two sides of those the short sides and then doing the lining slip pockets and the lining um zipper pocket with an opening in the bottom of that pocket is that good is that okay for homework and then that'll just help us get through we have a lot to do next class because it's already the fourth one then so we have a lot to get done um we'll get through it though the lining goes together almost exactly the same just a little different it'll be super fast so is that good for everybody yay nay 
I don't think I need to do a homework class for that because I think we all need to do it. We all know how to do it. But if you wanted one, you could always just message me that day and say that you just need kind of a visual to see it. But I think we all know what we're doing. Sound good? Have I lost everybody? You're comfortable, Wanda? Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, so that's what um, the plan is. And we'll be finishing this up next week already. That's crazy. And then the following week we'll be doing... Which one are we doing? I don't remember. Are we doing... Oh, the snowdrop. Oh, I love doing the snowdrop. You guys are going to love that one. So, yay. Thank you, everybody. Um, again, if you need any help with anything, please feel free to message me. Um, you know how to get a hold of me on Facebook or email or what have you. I'm always here to help you. Um, yeah. And I guess I will see most of you on Thursday, I hope. Thanks for another great class. I guess I got to go make dinner because the husband is late. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you guys next time.